because uh, I know God is here and He's going to transform us. How many of you like to be transformed by the Spirit of the living God? Let me see your hand. And I learned that uh, we can only experience that not because we are here, but because Jesus is here, because He is here. So I want to ask you again to stand up and I want to pray with you, not only to pray for you, but I want to pray with you also. And uh, I received a text that Lisa Ang, one of our intercessors, just got this uh, vision. When we sang champion, I saw gold color oil dripping from the people's hand. That's a great vision. And um, let's, let's pray. And uh, before you bow our heads, um, this is the word that the Lord gave me in the past one week or even a little bit more that uh, the enemy has been trying to harass you. The enemy has been trying to harass you, to make you frustrated, to make you angry, and um, you are being distracted and uh, in, in, in many different aspects, different angles, and probably at work or even at home, maybe with your spouse and uh, perhaps with your children or your parents or whatever situation right now, but I want, I want you to get this, the, the enemy wants to harass you to make you down, to make you discouraged, to make you stressed, to make you like you, you can, you can have any energy, you lose your, your courage. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Uh, before we pray, how many of you experienced the harassment from the enemy? Let me see your hand. Okay, okay, all right, all right, okay, yes, yes. Can you all agree with me right now? Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace and He has the authority and we come right now uh, as the uh, authority that God has given us as the believers in Christ Jesus. We command every harassment of the enemy to be gone right now. Lord Jesus, come on, let's, let's bow our heads and make an agreement. Make an agreement right now with the Spirit of the living God. Lord, we come before you right now knowing that you are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. And you have the authority, O oh God, and you have given us the authority. And right now, in the name of Jesus, the mighty God, I command harassment of the enemy right now. Those people, O oh God, those of you that you raise your hands, or some of you, you, you feel like you, you, you didn't have a chance to, to, to raise your hand just now, but I know you, I know you, and you know you. And you know that the enemy has been harassing you in many different aspects that cause you to be drained, cause you to be discouraged, cause you to be angry, cause you... Hey, I, I want you to understand that your enemy is not your wife or your husband. Your enemy is not your children or your parents. Your enemy is not your friends at work. Come on now. Your enemy is the devil himself. I want you to come against the work of the enemy. And right now, come in agreement with me. Would you do that? Come in agreement with me right now with the authority as believers of Jesus Christ right now. We command. Now I want you to command. I want you to say to the enemy, be gone right now. Harassment be gone. Harassment be gone right now, right now. And I declare, I declare right now the peace of God, the shalom of God. The peace, oh Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace right now, flow. Even right now, come on, every one of you, every one of you pray, every one of you lift up your voice right now. Yes, make noise, make noise in prayer right now. Come on, come on, whatever situation you're going through right now, oh Lord, cry out to Jesus. Yes, 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 He is present, He is here, He is here in our midst right now. With that authority, O oh God, I command the enemy, or oh, the harassment of the enemy, be gone right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the uh, gold color oil dripping from the people's hand. And Lord, right now, whatever provision that they need, whatever, whatever uh, situation that they're going through right now, Lord God, this, this, this uh, royalty vision, this provision vision, oh God. Lord, let there be provision in your people's life. In whatever they do, oh God. Lord, 
Oh God, let there be provision, provision. Oh, open doors, even the doors that has been shut for many years or even many generations, I declare to be open right now. Yes, 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 Lord, right now, right now, right now, that oil begin to drip. That oil begin to drip. That means it, it flows, it flows and it overflows. And Lord, we put our trust in you. As your people, we put our trust in you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, you are our King, you are our Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say it. Amen. I can hear you, everybody say it. Amen. You know what that word means? You know, amen means so be it. It shall be done. Amen. It shall be done. Amen. Shall be done. Amen. Shall be done. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated, please. I'm excited to share to you the word that God has put in my heart several months ago. And uh, I'm going to begin a new series in the next several weeks. And uh, in the past five weeks, we have been talking about evangelism. And evangelism is not only about a method. It's, only, it's not about how to, but it begins in the heart. And I believe we are called for such a time as this with a purpose. God has a purpose in your life. Amen. And uh, we are safe not only from something, but we are safe to something. We are not only safe from sin and safe from death, from eternal death, but we are safe to share the gospel, the gospel, the good news. We are safe from sin. We are, we are safe to bring uh, the gospel, the good news, the salvation to others. Amen? So it's not only from something, but to, to something. You are safe to, 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 to bring the gospel to others. I remember talking about evangelism. Uh, Joyce, can you give me that water bottle, please? Somehow my throat is kind of dry. Yeah. This is the, uh, ooh, kombucha. <laughs> Thank you. looks like water. It is water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Talking about evangelism, I, I mentioned earlier that it begins with the heart. I, uh, I remember some time ago I went to the gym and before I enter the front door, uh, I saw a guy just walking on the opposite side and we are about to enter the door. Uh, almost simultaneously, and the Spirit of God spoke to me, that man is under a lot of stress, why, uh, why don't you pray for him? And I immediately, I responded to the Spirit of God, and I said, hi Alex, how are you doing? And for some reason, this man responded just like, I, I didn't expect he would respond like this. He said, oh, I went, in, in the past couple of weeks, I went back, I, I, I went, uh, to hell five times and come back. Wow, what is that? What, what do you mean? Well, I lost my mom, and second one, my, my girlfriend left me, and then my father, he's uh, diabetic, so his leg was amputated, and my car was stolen, and uh, the number five I forgot, and uh, so, wow, that's, that, that's what he meant by I went to hell five times in several weeks and come back. So uh, because of the, again, uh, the spirit of God, you know, in me led me to pray for him. So I said, Alex, do you, mean, do you mind if I pray for you? No, please, please. So I laid my hands on him and I prayed for him I, in front of the uh, front entrance of the gym. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I prayed for courage. I prayed, Lord, that you encourage him in this time of difficulties. Is this all, all challenge after challenge and the situations that he's going through right now? I pray for courage. I, you know, I prayed, not, not, not a short prayer. I prayed until, you know, I felt like the spirit of the living God ministered to him. And after some time, you know, I said, amen, amen. And then Alex Look at me and said, uh, thank you very much. I feel much better. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, all right. So we, together, we, we went into the gym. And uh, so we check in. 
and uh, he's big and tall, you know. And uh, he put his hand on my shoulder. Thanks again for your prayer. I feel good already. By the way, my name is Eddie. <laughs> All right. Well, that prayer is good for Eddie too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just a vessel, okay? I, I made a mistake, but uh, that prayer is good because he was delivered. So, uh, funny stories happen when you share the gospel. How many of you experience that when you share the good news, not only the other people are blessed, but you are blessed too? Come on now. When you share the good news, when you share the gospel, the gospel is the good news. When you share Jesus, when you pray for the sick, you know, you, not only that you, you bless someone, but you, you also, you are being blessed. So, oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, today, where is my clicker? I'm sorry. <clears throat> today, I want to share to you and the, uh, the series that we are going to begin starting today is about local church. Can you say local church? Can hear you. It's kind of weak. Local church. All right, local church. Maybe you know about local church. Maybe you don't know about local church. Maybe you will know more about local church as I share the word today. And the title today is, I Will Build My Church. And let's begin to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 17 to 19. It says, uh, Jesus answered, Jesus answered and said to him, said to who? Said to Simon Peter. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and, oh, this is powerful, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Let me share to you the context of this verses. At that time, Jesus was, uh, he was with his disciples, and Jesus asked his disciples, according to people, who do they think that I am? So they answered. They answered, well, they said that uh, many of them said that you are John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist, he was already beheaded. He was already killed already. And uh, so many other people also say that you are Elijah, the prophet. He died a long time ago. No, not really. He was raised uh, with a chariot of fire. He, he, he went to heaven. And some, some people said that you are Jeremiah. And that this is the answers of the disciples. And um, some, some other people said that you are the other prophets. Other prophets. Okay. So then Jesus asked, but you, you. Who do you say that I am? Who do you say? According to you, who am I? None of them can answer that. Not even Peter. But finally, Simon Peter got a revelation. So if I ask you this question, if Jesus is here right now and ask you this question, who do you say that Jesus is to you? Oh, he's a good man, he's a prophet, he's a good teacher, he's a healer. Oh, yeah, he encouraged my, 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 my family when we went through tough times. Oh, yeah, he, he blessed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, is that all? Let me ask you this question again. Who is Jesus to you? Would your answer be, according to my carousel leader, Jesus is uh, blah, blah, blah. According to Pastor Tom or Pastor Jonathan or Pastor Dion, you know, Jesus is, no, 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 according to you. Can you answer that? I, I pray, I believe you can say it with, a, with such a confidence, just like this, this man, Simon, said, 
You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Whoa, that is powerful. And Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, the son of Jonah. Blessed are you because flesh and blood has not revealed. Revealed. So you need a revelation. You need a revelation. You need a revelation from the living God so you know. You know it personally. Not that from, from other people, not from uh, what other people say. You know, but it's you personally. Personally. This is very important. And Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church. Jesus came to this earth. He died. He, he was raised from the dead. And whatever he said is always fulfilled. And if he is the one that built the church, can he fail? Uh, can he fail? Can you, can you answer with confidence? Can he fail? No. The answer is a big no, no. Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church. And not only that, the gates, not only one, the, but plural, the gates of Hades, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, talking about revelation, I want you to know that uh, whatever happened in the Bible, it is like the, the, uh, the Bible consists of a lot of stories in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. There are a lot of stories after stories after stories. And I want you to know that stories after stories, it, it becomes a fulfillment of the prophetic word of what is going to happen in the, in the future. Sometimes it happened uh, 10 years from, from that time, you know, sometimes hundreds of years. And in this case, you know, I want you to know that uh, when Jesus said, I will build my church. How many of you remember that when Jesus was crucified and when he died on the cross and one of the soldiers came to, to him with a spear and he poked it into his sight. And then what came out from Jesus' sight? Correct. Water and blood. Water and blood. A pregnant woman, when it is time for her to deliver the baby, they would say the water breaks. And what came out is water and blood. When Jesus died on the cross, the church is birthed. Are you with me? In the book of Genesis, Adam was mentioned as the first man. The first Adam. The first Adam. And he was alone. And the Bible mentioned that it is not good for men to be alone. And God put Adam to sleep. And then God took one of his ribs from his side. And God created a woman, woman from his sight. Jesus, the Bible mentioned, Jesus is the last Adam. So when Jesus died on the cross, he birthed the church. And the Bible mentioned that the church is the bride of Christ is the bride of Christ. So I want you to know that uh, perhaps you have come to church. This, what I'm going to share to you, I, I pray that you will understand more about God's purpose as you join the local church. In this case, City Blessing. I want you to know that the church is so is so. Powerful. The church is called the bride of Christ. Jesus, he was he he, he he died, he was raised from the dead, and he ascended to heaven, and he will come back for the second time when he come back from the for the second time, he will come for his bride, which is the us. Us. Okay. 
So he is preparing, he is preparing us, he is preparing the church, he is preparing the church consists of many members, or oh, members in the body. Are we perfect? No, we are not perfect yet. But God is molding us right now, and God is preparing us, he is feeding us, he is equipping us, he is training us, so that we can become the salt and light in the world. And uh, talking about the church, the church, it is so powerful when, when, when you read this verse, and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's, it's talking about the church is supposed to be proactive, not passive. Supposed to be proactive, the gates of Hades. It's not like we defend ourselves from the, uh, from the gates of hell, but it says the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That means the church should be proactive, should be involved, should be involved. And let's, let, let's continue the next verse, reading the next verse here. Verse 19, it says, oh Jesus, verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Who is going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Not the president of America, not the queen of England. Jesus. Jesus. He will give you keys of the kingdom. Kingdom of heaven. How many of you come to church driving? You have your car key, all right? You live in an apartment, you live in a house, you have your house key, your apartment key. What, what happens if you, if you lose your, your key? If, what what happens if you lose your car key? Can you go home? No, you need the key. The key, the key is very important. And Jesus said, I will give you the keys, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, I will, I will give it to you. But what you need to do is to receive. You need to receive and believe and activate and implement and act upon it. Are you with me? If you don't receive, you will not get it. I remember many years ago, my friend Chuck Pierce is a prophet. He lives in Dallas. And uh, he shared his testimony because he, from time to time, he mobilized intercessors to travel to different nations all over the world. He went to Indonesia many times and he traveled uh, in uh, different other nations uh, many times with a group of intercessors, sometimes 10, sometimes 15, and a group of intercessors. And I remember Chuck, uh, Chuck Pierce shared this experience with me uh, when they were in Monaco. How many of you have been to Monaco? All right, and at uh, that time, you know, uh, they were just praying, they were praying, you know, praying in uh, one particular area, and um, suddenly, somebody, you know, like there were some uh, five, uh, seven people, uh, shoot them off, uh, excuse me, excuse me, make way, make way, please make way. No, no chaos, not riot, but it's just uh, an orderly matter, so... Uh, apparently, they are the, uh, the, 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 the secret service or the security of the uh, princess of Monaco. And uh, so these intercessors, they, they, they turn, wow, they, they look at the princess of Monaco so, so close, in a close distance. And these intercessors, some men, some women, and the women, you know, some of the women said, that, oh, so, so beautiful. So, uh, another person said, oh, look, look at, at, at her bracelets. So beautiful. Oh, it was these precious stones and uh, uh, surrounded by, by, by diamonds. And wow, so, so beautiful. And she said it uh, loud enough that the princess heard it. And as she walked, you know, as she passed by those intercessors and she heard the comments, she took off her bracelets and she walked and did this. Give it to the intercessor. And she walked. But the intercessors, out of excitement, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. You know what happened? The princess kept on walking. And 
And she just dropped the bracelet. <laughs> Walk. And the secret service talked to that woman. You have insulted the princess. She gave it to you, but you don't want to receive it. He took it. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Oh no, oh no, oh no, no. Me? No, no. No. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's for Pastor Dion. No, 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 no. That's for my, my castle leader. Could it be possible that you insulted Jesus? Why don't you say, oh, yes? Why do you say thank you, Jesus? How many of you know that we are in spiritual warfare more than ever right now? We need that. How many of you right now that the enemy has one goal and the goal is to steal, to kill, and to destroy? How many of you know that we need this key, this keys of the kingdom even more today than ever? We need that. We need that. Praise the Lord. With the authority God has given the church, we are to bind and loose whatever God has already bound and loose in heaven. To bind. What does it mean to bind? To bind means to declare something illegal and thus forbid it from happening. When you see things that is illegal, that is con contrary to the word of God that is happening in our city, in our nation... We are supposed to pray. We are supposed to pray. And you, we need to bind the things, you know. You know, whatever, whatever uh, God has bind in heaven, we can bind it on earth. Whatever God has loose in heaven, we lose it on earth. To lose is to declare something legal and allow it to happen. We need to lose it. Harassment, No. Harassment from the enemy, no, that's illegal. That's illegal in my life. It is illegal in my house. That's illegal in my family. Can you believe that? Yes. This is the key. Come on. This is, I give you the key. I have give you the key. You know, this is the key. Give you the authority. Don't say, oh no, oh no. This is what I mean by if you know the church, if you know the function of the church, the role of the church, and if you know how Jesus loved the church, he died for the church. The church was birthed when he died on the cross. So it is talking about binding and loosing. It's, it's talking about what is allowed or not allowed, what is permitted or not permitted. We need to allow more of his kingdom to come and we need to get rid of darkness in our city in our nation and it begins by preaching the gospel I'm not a preacher pastor well I've said it many times you don't have to be a preacher preacher to preach the gospel evangelist am I not an, an, an evangelist pastor I we, the pastors that, are, that have shared in the past five weeks, we began to share the gospel before even we became a pastor. When I still, when I was still in college, Adi came to me. I hope I can borrow your testimony. When he received Jesus, every time he went to campus, he brings his Bible and share to his friend. Right, Adi? Not a preacher, not a pastor, but he shared the gospel. Share the gospel. So, the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus shared about the gospel of the kingdom. Can you say the gospel? The gospel. Of the kingdom. <laughs> the gospel of the kingdom. What we want sometimes is only the gospel of salvation. 
please save me, Lord Jesus, from my sin. Please, Lord, uh, you are the Savior. When I receive you, when I die, I go to heaven. That's right. That's true. Uh, the gospel of salvation. Please save my family. Please save my relative. That's good. But if you look at the gospel, Jesus talked about the gospel of the kingdom many, many more than the gospel about salvation. That means the church, now by now I hope you understand that you are the church. I'll share a little bit more about the, what the meaning of the word church. Okay? The gospel of the kingdom, that means there is a king. There is a king in our life. There is a king in, in our church. I'm only the pastor in this church. But the head of the church is Jesus. But when you read the Bible, there are church universal and church local. Are you with me? Yes. Church universal, yes. Oh, the body of Christ all over the world. But the Bible mentioned that there are local churches. Local churches. Uh, the church in Rome, yeah. The church in Colossians, yes. The church in Walnut, oh, oh. Yes. Hello. The church in uh, Ephesians, in Ephesus. Yes. The church in Galatia. Yes. The church in San Bernardino. Yes. yes. Come on now. Uh, many, 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 many churches, you know. The church in San Diego. And we are only one of the local church. But the body of Christ, the body of Christ the church at large, the church universal, is the body of Christ. But, can you say, but? Yeah. Oh, but. You cannot say, uh, well, I belong to the church universal. Uh, we are part of the church universal, yeah. But you need to be part of the local church. You need to be plugged in the local church. You have, yeah, right now, we are here, we as the family of God. You are joining online, we are as the family of God. But when you go home, you have families, right? All right. The same thing with local church. You need to be committed to one local church where you can grow. Nowadays, well, even uh, since last year, you know, I know that many people, many, many people, when they join the service online, they, join, they can join the service on Sunday, on one Sunday. Can you say one Sunday? On one Sunday, they can join 15 different churches. Oh, yeah. Is it good? Uh, some people say, it's good, Pastor. I don't know about that. Because some people, they just watch uh, this one particular church. Uh, ah, the pastor is boring. Click, click. <laughs> ah, it's too long. <laughs> click, click, click. Oh, okay. Okay, this one. Uh, after you watch for five minutes, ah, the pastor is not funny. <laughs> click, click. And, uh, oh, you watch uh, another channel. Ah, the pastor is too tough. It's, it's just, uh, oh, so uh, now I, I change the way I ask questions to people. If I ask, uh, do you go to church? Some people would say, I, yes. But I would ask, who is your pastor? Some people don't know. Some people cannot answer. Who is your pastor? Up, up, uh, uh, well, it's uh, in uh, in uh, Walnut. Uh, in the no, 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 no. If you are not committed to one local church, you cannot grow, and you you do not completely fulfill the plan of God. I mentioned earlier, none of the local church is perfect. City blessing is not perfect, but we work together by the head. The head is Jesus himself. Jesus guide us, and we need to understand that. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Moving quickly here. Understanding the church. Jesus will build the church. 
Said about that. Now let's move to another verse. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. It says, Christ is also the uh, what? Oh, he is the head. He is the head. He is the head of the what? He is the head of the church. He is the head of the church. Now, let me, let me elaborate a little bit about the church. The word church in the original language is called ecclesia. Say that with me. Ecclesia. One more time. Ecclesia. Online audience. <laughs> All right. Ecclesia. What is ecclesia? The, the people, the called out ones, the called out ones, the people that are called out to assemble together in a public place to legislate the civil matters, the political issues, the uh, military issues. This is what Ecclesia is talking about. Civil, social, political, military. This is, this is what the Ecclesia is called for. Not only to join Sunday service, it's good. We need to Gather together. We need to assemble together. The Bible mentioned, do not forsake the assembling of God's people. But not only to stay in our four walls. Are you with me? But Pastor, yes? Did you, did you mention about political? Politics? Uh, yes. Pastor, do you mean that... Uh, we need to be involved in politics. Uh, no, we should not, Pastor. We should not. It's only for the uh, politicians. Uh, let's check what the Bible says. From the beginning, from the Old Testament, Abraham, he, he involved in the matter of nations. He met with the king of Sodom. He met with the king of Gomorrah. Uh, this uh, Esther, she became a queen, okay? And uh, talk about, who else? Uh, Samuel. Samuel, he involved, he was the one that ordained uh, Saul to be king of Israel. Samuel was the one that, that uh, anointed David to be king of Israel. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they become the advisor of the king, the governor and the king, and so forth and so forth. It's just like, hey, come on now, open, open our eyes. How about the New Testament? Okay, the New Testament, Peter and John, he talks to the high elite of the uh, uh, religious leaders, yes, and Saul, Paul, later on he, he became uh, Paul. He met with this governor, Felix. He met with King Agrippa. He talked to Caesar. And if you read in the book of Philippians, the household of Caesar sent greeting to Paul in the book of Philippians. Think about that. That means this man, even though he was in prison, he has influence to the household of Caesar. So should we be involved in politics? Probably you are, not, you are not involved in practice politics, but we need to understand and we need to support. And I am glad as we are going to have membership commitment later on after I preach, uh, one of our, uh, one of the person who's going to join as a member of this church is Eric Ching. This Wednesday, he asked me to, uh, to officiate the uh, swearing-in uh, as he is going to be the mayor of our city. <laughs> this Wednesday. He was the mayor of Walnut several years ago and then council member, and then he is, uh, as, as of this coming Wednesday, so next week when you meet him, he's the mayor already. And he is running for Congress. Come on now. 
And uh, we have Mrs. Betty Chu here. She, she, she is the former mayor of Montreal Park. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, again, um, we need to understand that uh, if we are not equipped with certain knowledge, the, uh, the media can, can give you different understanding. Are you with me? <laughs> um, July 22nd, a uh, couple of weeks from now, Pastor Che An, how many of you remember that we are working, to, I'm working together with Revive California, and uh, I'm a member of the executive board committee, and um, we are inviting uh, on, the, on, on, on July 22nd, uh, Sarah Pellin, the, uh, she, she, is the, uh, she was the vice president candidate from Alaska, uh, she's coming, and uh, Mike Pompeo, she's coming, yes. and uh, he is the former uh, Secretary of State, and uh, some other people. So if you would like to come, uh, ask me or ask Pastor Dion, he has the information, I can give you the link, you can, you can just register and, and join. Why? Because we need to be equipped, we need to understand. Are you with me? The church, the ecclesia, the role of the ecclesia. Actually, we need to go into the public place. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the world. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. So Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning Supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. So again, understanding the church. Oh, Jesus. Understanding the church. Jesus will build the church and Jesus is the, what? He's the head. He is the head and we are his. We are his body. We are his body. How many of you are connected with your head? How many of you know that your head is connected to you, but when your head talks to your body, your body won't listen? What do you mean, Pastor? I don't get it. Okay, your doctor said, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, sir, you're, you have a high blood pressure. Uh, <laughs> pleasure, not pleasure, <laughs> pressure. <laughs> it's not a... <laughs> you have high cholesterol. Uh, the head was informed, but the body, the body rejects. The doctor said, you need to change your diet, ma'am, sir. Uh, 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 you need to exercise. The head is not connected to the body. How about the church? We need to pray, and as we pray, as we seek the Lord, the head will speak to us, the body. He is the head. Jesus is the head. So that means the head is leading the body. God wants to guide us. He guides us through his word. But I don't see your Bible, Pastor. My, my, my Bible is in my iPad. Uh, I have my uh, paper Bible at home, but uh, because of sometimes, you know, my... My eyes, we, uh, with the iPad, you can make it brighter, you can make it bigger, you know. Uh, but I want you to know, I have my Bible. I have the printed Bible at home. So by saying Jesus is the head, that means he wants to guide us with his word. He wants to guide us by speaking to you uh, directly by uh, godly counsel. God speaks to his people. Amen? Can we move on? All right. I'm almost done. 2.19. All right. 
And not holding fast to the head, uh, you need to read the uh, previous verses. It says that there are some people, they, they are not connected to the head. They rebel. They do whatever they want to do, you know. And from whom all the body, all the body, can you say all the body? <laughs> nourished and knit together by joints, so by ligaments and grows with the increase that is from God. So uh, Paul the apostle is explaining, uh, explaining it to us very clearly, very simple, very practical that we are one body. There are a lot of joints, a lot of ligaments, nerves. You know, it's just like, hey, we are one body. We need one another. Jesus. So we need to understand these three points. And I will conclude in these three points. We are the body. Can we say we are the body? Look at your body. Look at the <laughs> person sitting next to you. We are the body of Christ. All right. <laughs> Somebody, uh, when I say, look at your body, oh, my body. Okay, <laughs> my body. <laughs> need to look at the whole body. You can look at your body and, oh, okay, Lord, uh, let my body connect it with the head. Okay. And uh, body, we are one. But how many of you have accidentally, when you eat, you bite your own tongue? Not somebody else's tongue. I think we all do. What do you do? You were eating. Oh, whose fault? Whose fault? <laughs> whose fault is it? It's my tongue. It's my tongue. Okay, cut it off. No, no, no. It's not the tongue. It's the, it's the, the teeth that, that, that bite the tongue. Pluck it out. Is that how it works? Come on now. We are one body. We need to be committed. We need one another with a diff different gifting, different calling. We equip one another. Even part of your body that, that looks small. How about your pinky? You need your pinky? If you don't need it, pluck it out. Is that a good suggestion? No. We all need it. We need the body. We need the body. We need one another. Oh, Jesus. Let me read a few verses that I don't show it in the slide here, but this is <laughs> very practical. I have a lot more verses, but I want to cut it short. Okay. First Corinthians chapter 12, starting from verse 12. You know, Paul the Apostle, after he talked about the, the gift of the Spirit, he talks about the body. The human body has many parts, but many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles. Some are Asian, some are Hispanic, some are black, some are, you know, we're in between. Some are black, some are white, some are blue, some are tan. I'm the real tan. And uh, <laughs> Paul tan. Uh, okay. But we are one body. Come on now. We are all one body. We are one, one, one. Okay. And uh, it says here, oh, Jesus, help me. I lost the verse that I just read. Okay. Some are slaves. Some are free. But we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we are all share the same spirit. Yes, verse 14. The body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, if the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I am not a hen. I don't need you. Poof. Come on now, is that how it works? No. That does not make any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make any less a part of the body? The whole body, if the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? 
And if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. I need you. You need me. We need one another. We need to understand that we need to be united in faith. We need to be united in our belief in Jesus Christ. Not only going to church, but the purpose of the church. Not only to receive, 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 and bless, 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 to be a bless me club. No, no, no. That is not what the church is called for. Ecclesia is not only for that. We can give back to the community. Let's all stand up. Father, thank you for your word, O oh God. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray right now, God. I pray, Lord, that uh, even as I share the message, I want you to understand if you are here and if you are, or if you are joining online right now and you are not a part of the body, if you are not a part of the local church, I want you to make a commitment. But before you make a commitment to the local church, by the way, commitment I'm going to continue this message again. The commitment is, is very rare right now, in, uh, not only in America, but also in the world. Many people are com not committed to their work. Many people are not committed to relationship. Many people are not committed to their marriage. You know, oh my goodness, it is, it is very important for us to understand. Commitment is very, very important. So, Father, I pray, before you even uh, want to make a commitment to the local church, the most important part, you need to make a commitment to receive Jesus, not only as your Savior, but also as your Lord. Not only as the Savior, the healer, the provider, but he is your King. So, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you want to receive him as your Lord and King, I want you to simply raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray with you. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Yes. Oof. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God, you are awesome. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody receives Jesus openly, publicly. Why don't we all pray to support would you agree with me? Lord Jesus, come into my life, not only to save me, not only to forgive me, you forgive me and you save me, you make me righteous, but you're also my Lord and King. I open my heart and I receive you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.